is color? Color is simply electromagnetic waves at different frequencies. So the blue is at a higher frequency than the green, and the, which is at a higher frequency than the red. Now you may be looking at these numbers here. These are wavelength. Remember that the frequency is equal to the speed of the wave divided by the wavelength. In this case, we're talking about light, so it's the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So, the larger the frequency, the smaller the wavelength. So therefore, you see here that you have a small wavelength for the blue light, larger wavelength for the green, and larger still for the red. Now, we're going to do a few experiments to really illuminate what color is. Now, first of all, you probably know this, but white light is all the colors combined. And I can show you that by just holding up this fiber optic to the sort of ambient white light in the room. Oh, I should get go. That always helps. And if I do that, you see you get a pretty flat spectrum. All the colors are represented. They add up to white light. Now what I'm going to do is show you what it looks like with an LED. So over here I have a setup of various LED lights, red, green, and blue. And I will plug in the power supply, and now you see that it's red. And we can hold the fiber optic here, and now let me show you on the uh, screen. So here's what we got from the red LED. And I, I froze it so it's not jumping all around. But you can see you have a nice peak in the red spectrum. That is around, you know, 600, and this looks around 660, 670 nanometers. And that's where it's peaked, and that's because it's red light. What makes it red is the fact that it has a certain wavelength, that wavelength being around 650 nanometers. Let's now turn on the blue LED. So I will switch the power lead over to the blue. And we'll, sh we'll hold the fiber optic near the blue LED. So here we go. Here's our data for the blue LED. I kept the data from the red LED here just as a reference. But the blue line represents the data that we just took from the blue LED. The flat at the top is just because it's saturated. Um, I held the fiber optic maybe a little closer than I did for the red LED. What's important to notice is, look, the blue light is centered here around 450 nanometers. That's what makes it blue, the fact that it has a smaller wavelength than red, a wavelength of around 450 nanometers. Our sensors are right here in our eyeball, and we have three cones, red, green, and blue. That's all we have in our eyeball, is sensitivity to red, green, or blue these wavelengths. Well, when our detector registers a wavelength of 450 nanometers, our brain says blue light. Great. So we've got red, blue. Let's do the third one, green. So here we have the green LED, and let's take some data. Here's our results for the green LED. Again, I kept our previous data from the red and the blue. But the green line represents our latest data of the green LED. So notice that green is peaked right in between the red and the blue. And it's peaked right here around 550 nanometers. And that's what makes it green. There you go. Red, green, and blue. That's all we have in our eyeballs. And then different combinations, if you had red and green, for example, that would make yellow. Now, let me end this by showing you one more plot that I find very interesting. What we did is we took a bunch of radish leaves, we crushed them up, soaked them in alcohol, and then instead of a transmission plot, we did an absorption plot. What light was absorbed by the radish leaves? And here are the results. The blues were absorbed by the radish leaves, and the reds were absorbed by the radish leaves. The greens were not absorbed. Why not? Because they're reflected. That's why when you look at a radish leaf or, or most plant leaves, they're green. They're green because they're absorbing the red and the blue. What's 
left to reflect into our eyeball, 